Your Bible say amen. amen. You don't say only. <laughs> amen. There we go. We're going to start chapter. Let's just start at chapter 20. Matthew 14, chapter 20. Verse 20. Matthew 14, verse 20. I'm sorry. My tongue was covering my eye teeth. I couldn't see what I was saying. Seals had them at 150 miles an hour. You can get to the shore real quick. 
150 miles an hour. These guys are rolling. So, straight away, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him on the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into the mountain apart to pray. When the evil was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. In other words, the winds, the opposition was so strong that they could not get where they were going. Oh, God, have mercy. Stop it right there. The adversity was so strong, they could not get where they were going, where Jesus told them to go, following Jesus' directions and his command. The opposition was so strong, they were stopped. They were halted. I, I, there's somebody here right now, I can about to say the same thing. You know, I was on the way to do what Jesus said. I'm doing what he said. I'm living his word. And as I'm trying, they got so strong, I can't go forward. I can't go backward. I'm just stuck. Anybody here felt that way? Amen? I can tell by the looks on some of y'all's faces, you may be there right now. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It was a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. And when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. Y'all say beginning. They yeah. weren't sunk yet, but it was close. Began to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. Not when he got to Jesus. When he got to Jesus, Jesus just got him up and helped him back to the ship in the middle of the storm. And then they were in the ship, came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. So that's what he had. So, Father, we love you, Lord. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We know, God, you're alive and well on the throne, Father. We know there's nothing impossible for you. I ask you right now, Lord, to touch and anoint each person here. Meet the need in every person's life right now. We know, God, the needs are great. We know that you're greater. Help us not fear the storm. Help us not fear the repercussions of the wind. Help us, God, to move forward in you anyway. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And church said, Amen. Amen. Wait now to get somebody a high five, low five, no five, three and a half, excuse me, four and a half, four and a quarter, and say, God's got this. You know, I was just sitting there, and I, I was thinking, this morning I had to find some of these little bands that I had with Bible scriptures on them. And it's amazing the one I put on his hand because the one I hear it says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a, a future and a hope. Had it on this hand. I was playing my bass and while I was playing my bass, I, I was praying to the Lord. I said, Lord, we need something good today. We need you to come in and give hope and give encouragement. We need you, Lord, to, to touch everything we do. To let it be something to make a difference in people's lives. And I looked down, and while I was playing, I saw this scar that's shaped like an S. You know where that scar came from? I was on the way to do a wedding many, many, many years ago to this church. On the way to do the wedding, uh, a car came across the line in a curve and hit. Uh, he grazed the car in front of him. He hit me. Head on, but if it hadn't had grazed that car, it hit me like this. But because it grazed that car, I mean, just enough as you could tell it's been hit. That's it, knocked off the, knocked off the side mirror. That was it. Grazed just enough so it hit me head on this way, it hit me this way. And when it hit me this way and tore the car all to pieces, I spun around 190 foot and and uh, hit hit the van behind me. And those girls were in bad shape. I mean, he hit the van. And there was uh, two fatalities, two people that hit me. They were killed on the impact. And, and the two girls, their backs were messed up. And when I saw, I couldn't get out of the car. And when I saw the fire or the smoke, it's amazing how I got out of that car. And, and, and so I found another gear, got out of that car, and I was sitting on the side of the road, and I could hear, whoa, whoa, whoa. and they said, what in the world? I said, I said what's going on? I said, I, I, I'm get, I got to get my head together. Got to get my head together. Of course, I had a concussion, but but uh, and I got my whole side was bruised. But 
My arm got cut because the glass was knocked out of the car, and my arm was cut in an S. I don't know if that was uh, for, for uh, sold, <laughs> salvage, saved, whatever it was, that S. And while I was paying my base, I was saying, God, we need you to just wrap us in your arms today. And I looked down and I saw that S. He says, son, I never stopped holding you from the last time. That awesome. God's got us. Amen. You know, there was a father on the beach with his children uh, uh, when his four year old son ran up to him and grabbed his hand and led him to the shore where a seagull lay dead in the sand. He said, Daddy, what happened to him? He said, He died and went to heaven. The little boy thought for a moment and said, Well, what happened? God threw him back. <laughs> Did God throw him down? Have you ever felt like God threw you down? Have you ever felt like God's actions didn't make any sense. Hey, have you ever felt like, oh no, here we go again. God, last time when you showed up, it was powerful. Now this time, it ain't looking good. I don't understand. It doesn't make sense to me, God. I feel like you threw me back down. Wow. That happens to many people all the time. I, I hear that in counseling. I hear that all the time. You know, you feel like God is there, but you can't see him, you can't touch him, you don't know where he is at. So so, so when the bottom drops out, we started last week, and I'm just going to have that just a couple of slides from last week so we can have some clarity in this thing. Uh, uh, this passage speaks of unstable times. Your vision is obscure, your footing's unsure, and security is insecure. Uh, it was collective because everybody was suffering in that boat. But also, Peter was the one. He was going to step out and see what was going on. So there was two storms, actually. So, so the bottom had actually dropped out, but there was two storms the same day. Circumstances on the outside, and then there was the circumstances on the inside. And that disrupted their peace. And so, so here it is. Again, this is just from last week, and then we're going into the five things. Uh, and this time, it's useless to focus on the unsure things. And that's what we do. We're notorious as humans to focus on the unsure things when you're in a storm. When you've lost a loved one, when you've lost your job, when, when, when things are going south and you just can't seem, you've got the breath knocked out of you and you're trying to get up but you can't breathe and you're wondering what in the world is going on. And you start focusing on the unsure things and when you focus on the unsure things, it just heightens your fear and it just gets you frustrated. And, and you don't feel any hope. And, and, but it's useful if you can just focus on the sure things. It'll calm your fear. It'll, it'll, it'll relieve your frustration. It brings hope. You know, you know uh, uh, a lot of times when, when I find myself in a situation that I don't know exactly what to do, sitting at Beth's bedside, I did this so many times, and, and, and going through all things you go through just life, period, is I learn when my world is turning upside down. Uh, how many's ever had vertigo? Vertigo is, where'd you go? <laughs> you know, well, when vertigo kicks in, you try to find something solid to look at. If you try not to if you look at what's, what's spinning around with you, you just spend more and more and more, and you get sick at your stomach, and we'll leave it right there. And the same way happens, you know, uh, uh, if you get seasick. You're standing on the boat, you get seasick, and you start looking at the boat and all this stuff, and it just gets bad. What you got to do if you're on a boat and you're seasick is look at the shore and focus on the shore. If you've got vertigo, find something solid that's not going to move and focus on that. And eventually, it'll die down. So I've learned that too. So when things are going crazy around me, I can't trust in relationships. I can't trust in anything. I can't trust in my own wisdom. What I do is I find the sure thing to focus on. And what is that? God's Word. I will hold on to his word. I will look at his word. I will, I will claim his word. I will hold on to his word. And when I do that, it causes my fear, my frustration, and it brings hope. So there's, there's, so there's, there's five things. <clears throat> last week we started on the first one, so I'm not going to go way into it like I did last week. Just one slide, just so you can get some clarity here. Uh, five assurances in the storm. Number one, I want you to see this. The Lord brought them there. <laughs> well, thank you, Lord. Uh, have you ever had something happen to you that was so bad? These guys down the river, immediately Jesus made the disciples get in the boat 
and go ahead and be to the other side while they dismiss the crowd. This is not an accident. This is not a blind move. God didn't go, well, I didn't see that coming. God didn't say, well, I'm not sure if they're going to be able to make it. God already knew that this was going to happen, and God already prepared them by letting them see the miracle beforehand. If I take loads of fishes and feed 20,000 people, I can help you in your storm. <coughs> so, again, you got to watch this. You've got to see the timing. God knows what he's doing, and God knows how to take care of business. Amen? So it's not an accident. It's not a blind move. Jesus looked at this thing. He said, you know what? You've already seen what I can do in, in crisis management. You know, I was just there. I was talking with somebody that said, we'd rather be proactive. Than, it's easier to be proactive in the storm than to be in crisis management after the storm. Well, sometimes you don't see the storm coming. God does this. So you have to totally, don't say totally, totally rely on him. You can't trust yourself. You can't trust what's going on. The storm is about to strike, and so it's test time. It's the test after the lesson. The lesson was, look at what I can do. It said, there's nothing impossible for me. I can take little or nothing and make something amazing out of it. So now, get in the boat. I know the storm's coming, but I want you to see even more now. Will you really trust me when you hit that storm? So first, the Lord brought them there. Number two, the Lord sought God for them there. Then there, Jesus prayed for his followers. You see, he seemed absent. How many at times you're in trouble and it seems like God is absent? I've seen it. I've felt it. felt like God was absent or felt like he was unconcerned. But the truth of the matter is, when God sent them out, he went up. Wow. Think about something now. He sent them out, and he went up. Some of y'all right now, you're on the way out, and you're wondering what's happening, and don't realize, although he seems unconcerned, and seems like he's absent, he's gone up, and he is interceding to the Father, for you. The Bible even tells us in Hebrews, I love this, seeing then that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, he's gone up, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, but we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, our weaknesses, our doubting times. You know, sometimes I give doubting Thomas a run for his race. How about you? If the truth be not, it will be some doubting Thomas will be doubting. David, you put your own name in there. Amen. The uh, uh, feelings of our first, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. In other words, he was in a car. Yeah, it's amazing to me. I, mean, I was just asking the guys earlier. Why do we call Good Friday Good Friday? Supposedly, that's the day. I personally think it was Thursday, but still, Good Friday's fine. It's the day that Jesus hung on the cross and died. Now, during the time it was going on, it wasn't good. During the storm, it was not good. Mary's at the foot of the cross crying for her son and watching all of his life blood flow from his body after he was beat unrecognizable. He beat, beat so bad <coughs> that his guys even ran and hid for days. What's the good about it? This was the most horrible storm the disciples would ever have to face up to this point. We call it good. Why do we call it Good Friday? Because we know that Sunday's coming. The disciples didn't know that. Jesus endured the cross because he knew Sunday was coming. But he, his disciples, his mom, none of them knew that Sunday was coming, so it was not good. But after they know the end of the story, then it's called Good Friday. Some of you in here right now, you're going through things and you haven't seen Sunday yet. You don't even know Sunday's coming. And so you're seeing the storm and you're seeing the pain and you're hurting and you're thinking, God, hey, you just don't even know where I'm at. You're not watching me. You don't see. And God says, it's Friday right now, but Sunday is coming. And when your Sunday comes, you'll look back years later at that Friday and you'll learn to say, it was good for me. 
it was good for me that I went through that storm. Because through that, I learned something I couldn't learn any other way. The first thing is I learned that you're faithful no matter how I feel. You are faithful. Now look, look. Let us therefore come boldly. That means don't you walk in there backwards. Don't walk in there with your head held down. Come boldly to the throne of grace. What's grace? Grace is something you do not deserve. You may be in a storm of your own causing. You may have even helped out in this storm. This will be a storm that you have no, no, you don't even know why it's happening, but you can come to God to the throne of grace and find help. Why would that come? You can obtain mercy and find grace and to help in the time of need. Now let's just look, uh, Look up here, a great example of his prayer. Luke 22, 31 through 32. He says, Oh, Peter, he said, I pray for you, yet your faith fell not. He said, But when you're converted, I want you to go strengthen the brother. Can you imagine Jesus telling you that? He just told him, I'll die for you, Lord. There's nothing I won't do for you. And so, <laughs> and so the Lord says, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can imagine that. Sometimes I thought those prayers. I tell God what I'm going to do, and he looks down and goes, <laughs> Can you imagine God doing that? You're going, Lord, I'll do this if you do that. He goes, Yeah, right. He said, What happened last time? I did it, you didn't. Or oh, remember last time? Or oh, I know you're good enough. I know, David, you just look. I know. You might not, but I. So you, you're going to let God laugh. Tell him your plans. Tell him how you're going to do something. So first, that there's the power in his prayer. It says, he prays that our faith will not fail. But, now let me pray if it fail. It didn't mean that he wouldn't have his moments, okay? Listen carefully. I pray for you that your faith fail not. But when you are converted, go strengthen the brother. Did not mean that he wouldn't have trying times. Did not mean that he wouldn't come to the point where he weren't even sure if he trusted God anymore. What it meant was God wouldn't leave him at that point because he wouldn't give up. Eventually he wouldn't give up and he would turn back. So also, it's prophetic because it says when you are converted, when, when, when your weakness is turned to strength, when, when, when everything that was turned against you now seems to be turning your way, when you're converted, what well, Sunday is there? Then go strengthen the brethren. So it's it's protection too. It's only temporary. When you're converted, productive, you strengthen the brother. You know what this is? This is love on its knees. Wow. Love on its knees. You know, I sit back sometimes and I, and, and I see stuff people are going through and I know stuff that we all go through. Uh, how many in here has a perfect job? Perfect job. Perfect. No problem. How many has got the perfect family? No problems. How many here has got the, the perfect life? No problems. If you raise your hand, we're going to pray for that line of spirit to be cast out of you. Do you know we talk about dysfunctional families and dysfunctional jobs and dysfunctional whatever? If the truth be known, and don't get mad at me, if the truth be known, every family has its dysfunction. Dysfunctional is every family. But what we have done is we've learned to be comfortable in our dysfunction. Don't throw tomatoes at me, right? If you do, make sure they're peeled and seedless. Everybody has some type of dysfunction in their life, but in our own lives, we've learned to function in our dysfunction. We've learned to become comfortable in our dysfunction, and so sometimes we don't even recognize it. So God says, "I'm going to get you out of this." I'm going to help you to be uncomfortable in your dysfunction so that you can do something more for me. So what it does is, just like with Peter, Peter says, I'm going to, I'll die for you, Lord. He says, yeah, right. Tonight, you're going to deny you doing me three times before the cock crows. So, so, so I'm going to get you out of your dysfunction. Part of Peter's dysfunction was his and his ego. Amen. So God was taking care of that. So, so, so he prayed for them there. Number three, he caught them there. The Lord came to his own, verse 25, just in time at the darkest hour. He wasn't too early. He wasn't too late. The 
These are experienced fishermen. These guys know what it's like because uh, over in that area, storms because the mountains were around them, the storms, they couldn't even see the storms coming. And many times while they're out in the water, the storms would hit them without any notice. And when it would swoop down, sometimes it would be so bad that it would capsize the boat. That's why most people when they went fishing only fished around the shoreline. That way when the storms came, they could go on and get out. And I remember the very first time Jesus saw his disciples and met them. He said, I want you to launch out into the deep for a drop. Launch out into the deep. But we go around the edges because the storms come around so bad, we don't need to get out there and we can't get back in to protect ourselves. But he had to go out into the deep. Now he's done it again. I need to go all the way across this time. So they came to his own just in time at the darkest hour, victorious over their greatest fear to date. Their greatest fear to date. Some of us, we've, we, 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 we've overcome so many things. Certain times we think, well, we got this now. We got it. So God allows something a little bit stronger and a little bit harder. We got this, Lord. But the only way you can grow is to get a little bit harder and a little bit stronger. It's got to be hitting you pretty strong in order for you to look. So, so what's this? What, what they feared was being swallowed up by the raging sea. But he reveals he's got victory over it. He walked on the water. Can you imagine that? Can you see him walking on the water? Wow, isn't that powerful? Let me ask you a question today. What are you afraid of? Uh, what's got you going? What kind of fear has got you? You know, in Gethsemane, Jesus was there. At Gethsemane. And the Bible says that he knew what was coming. And so as he's at Gethsemane, he's praying about this thing. He's asking God that it was possible let it pass away from him, pass over him, because he said, I know what this cup of wrath is going to be, so let it pass over. But he also knew to fulfill his father's will, he had to drink of that cup. Now, Gethsemane means crushing. It means to be, to be literally crushed in the wine press. So let's just watch this now. There is no oil without squeezing. There's no wine without pressing the grapes. There's no fragrance without crushing the flowers. And there's no real joy without sorrow. You may be in the middle of your storm right now and you feel like you're being crushed. You feel like you're being torn from limb to limb. But you know what's actually happening is? God's honing you and developing you and making something in you that you can't learn in the book. It's something that you can't just 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 pick up and there it is. You know, you just, just fall off a turnip truck and land in it. Amen? So, so if you're going through a storm, the bottom seems to be dropping out. Consider that the storm may be God's will for you. Wow. Thank you, Lord. I appreciate that. Like I don't have enough to think about. Now i got a storm crushing me. God knows. God knows. You know, I, I looked the other day, I was looking on, looking up, looking at Lee and looking online. I thought I had good old ways to go and found out that I'm actually, I had to double up on the class, but I'm graduating December 14th. Isn't that cool? That's awesome. I'm, and I'm not going to believe that I know of. I'm, I'm, I'm doing this thing in a different way. I, I'm going to actually have my, have it presented to me two different ways. I'm going to come here because y'all have been with me through this whole thing. And, and somebody's going to present my, my, my hey, where my cap again? I don't know. But, but then when I go, and y'all can present my diploma to me, but then I'm going to go to D.C.'s house, and D.C. and Daniel are going to present my diploma to me, which I think is awesome. Absolutely off the hook, awesome my two boys. You know, hand them my diploma. That's, that right there is worth a million bucks to me. You know, so but the point I'm trying to make is I was looking, and I was thinking, Good God. Last night I was writing a, uh, like for Friday night, I was trying to hurry up before the deadline, and I was writing an uh, eight-page essay. And I was writing it, and I was writing it, and I was writing it, and then citing it, and writing it, and citing it, and writing it, and citing it. I said, God, is it ever going to end? Then it hit me. Yeah, December 14th. Amen. Does that mean school's out? No, it just means Lee's out. School's still in. Amen. There's still more stuff I got to do, but... That part of this journey is going to be gone for right now. Amen? Some of y'all's journey. You don't even realize how good it looked. It was until I looked up until I looked up in there the other day and realized how close I was. 
I thought, man, I got, I got to go help me here in six more months. No, I'm not. I'm not. Some of you are thinking it'll never end. It'll never end. And if you only knew, if you could only see, if you had like Lee has, a little thing you pop up and look at your classes left. And when they get through those classes, I get that degree. Wow. And some of y'all can just look right now. You're thinking this, is going to, this has been going on for years, years, years. I've been at least since 2015. I can't wait to get out of that place. Some of y'all have been in the same for years. You're going, am I ever going to get out of this storm? If you could just gobble up that book and let you look and go, oh yeah, it is next Friday. It is in a month from now. Then you get excited about the storm because you know the storm is getting ready to end. God may be crushing you, but remember, God knows how to mold you and to shape you. Amen? Here we go. I love this. There's a difference between school and life. In school, you're taught a lesson and then given a test. In life, you're given a test that teaches you a lesson. Wow. And sometimes you're given the test then the lesson. Wow. How many been tested in your lesson? <laughs> I can put up both hands and both feet by the floor. God knows what he's doing. Number four, Jesus taught them there. Jesus helps us grow through trials. He said, Peter said, uh, Lord, if it be you, bid me come. And he said, come on. Come on. So Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, came to Jesus, and that was the end of the story. Everything that happened in that When he realized that by watching Jesus and listening to his words in the middle of the storm, he began to do the impossible. He was overcoming the storm. But while he was overcoming the storm, he got his eyes off the overcomer and got his eyes on what was overcoming him. And he began to sink. Wow. Wow. And he cried out, Lord, save me. And the Lord did. So watch this picture of divine power meeting human need. Get ready. We're just getting ready to close right now. DC, you might as well get something ready. Here we go. Number five. Jesus halted the storm there. Jesus will eventually bring you peace. The Bible says immediately, Jesus reached out his hand, caught him. You have a little faith. Why do you doubt? And when he climbed to the boat, the wind died down. Those that were in the boat worshiped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Jesus halted two storms that day. He halted the weather, the storm in the weather, and he halted the one within, in the disciples. We have no need to fear when the bottom drops out. Even though you think Jesus isn't there and doesn't see you, he's watching. He's watching carefully. He's directing the storm. And as he directs the storm, you know, uh, Eddie and I were talking. I remember, uh, and, I'm, and I know some other people too, other people were doing it too. Uh, one day we had this hurricane coming. It was back when I was living in Aurora, we had the hurricane coming. And it was a bad hurricane. They said it was going to be hit for hit. It was going to really, really, really be bad. And so I was actually getting my stuff up, getting, getting stuff packed up so I could go further inland. And I, I can't remember quite how the story goes, but Eddie came up. And, and so me and Eddie, we marched around the house seven times. We said, Lord, we got to see protection. We want to see protection for everybody in this storm. And I come back in the house. I felt that power of God. I still don't tell the story quite right. Eddie had to tell it the right way. But I felt the peace of God. I remember coming in the house and told, told Beverly, put the stuff back up. Let's put it back up. We're not going anywhere. And turn on the television. And it said that hurricane just switched past and went down to South Carolina instead of North Carolina. And I, it's just an amazing. Certain, there's times we go through storms. There's times where God diverts the storm. Either way about it, both of them had a very strong effect on me. God's got this. God's got this. God's got this. And while I go playing that bass and looking at the S, this S car on my arm, and no one knows wearing this Jeremiah 29 11 on this wrist. Wow. 
they just fired me up. I was ready to run around this place about 25 times, but my friends, some of y'all couldn't catch me. Amen. Everybody stand. Every head bowed, every eye closed. First thing I want to ask this morning, before I ask anything else, every head bowed, every eye closed, I'm not going to call you out, I'm not going to make a spectacle of you, I'm not going to make an example. Whatever we do, you can run from your, from your pew. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, that's the first storm that's going to calm in your life. <clears throat> you need to have a Savior that you can call on when you're in the storm. If you're here today, nobody's looking around, every eye's closed, your hands are bowed. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ, your personal Savior, well, nobody's looking, but just slip up their hand quickly. I don't know it, but I want to know it. Maybe you're here today. And you kind of slid back from where you were. Yeah, at one time you were strong with God. At one time you knew Him. You knew He had you. You knew this is all under control. But because of storms, because of other things, because you thought, thought Jesus was distant, He was not watching, He was not caring, you let go. And you know that you need a stronger relationship with God. You need to get back into good graces with God like you were before. Nobody looking around. Every head bowed, just slip that hand up. I, I need to get back where I was. Bless the Lord. Bless him. Bless him right now. Maybe you're here right now and you're just in the storm. The bottom's dropped out. You don't understand it. You did what Jesus told you to do. You were not operating in the flesh. You were operating in the spirit. You listened to what God said and why you were obeying what God said. Here comes the storm. It's terrible. You can't go forward, you can't go back, you're kind of stuck. And Satan says that God orchestrated all this just to tear you up. He don't love you, he don't care about you. He's unattached, he's distached, he's away from you. He's
coming on Tuesday nights, I challenge you to come because one thing Tuesday nights are doing is to help us get our eyes off the storm so that God can talk to us. Sometimes we're so wrapped up in the storm that we can't even hear God. We can't see Him. And this stuff on Tuesday night is to help you get your mind focused off of the storm and on Him. We're just getting started. It may have seemed a little crazy. That's all right. You haven't thought of crazy before, have you? Amen. It's okay. But we're going to start getting into some deep stuff. But to get to the deep stuff, we got to first get you ready for the deep stuff. Amen. My hearts and minds clear. You might tell y'all guys are looking good today. With the exception of a few of you, you really are looking good. <laughs> Ha, <laughs> ha, 